<clears throat> Welcome back to part two of front squatting for long-legged people. Last week's video focused mainly on kind of positive changes you might want to make to your front squat, especially positive changes if you've long femurs or just long legs in general. What we're going to do this week is talk about like some specific examples. I know some people were asking for like a video of what a bad front squat might look like versus what a more ideal front squat might look at. So today we're going to really focus on that. We're going to point out some of the things you really want to watch for. And this will be much more of a kind of real world video per video breakdown of what this kind of more ideal front squat will look like. So here we have an example of a what I would consider or what we would consider a non-ideal front squat. The certain things we're focused on here or certain things they appear to be cueing here which are not ideal for firstly building leg strength, so building anterior strength in an athlete and then secondly for building an actually stronger front squat. This front squat looks nice, right? So you can't deny that this looks good. There's good ranges of motion and it looks grand when it's like not loaded, when you're not pushing this from week to week. And that really is where the issues come. So what do we have here? We have firstly an over-reliance on this kind of idea of a shelf, like really getting up your, your elbows as high as you can possibly get them. You'll see there's no full grip on the barbell here. So no full grip on the barbell is is troublesome for a number of reasons the first of these reasons being where that bar will actually sit on our shoulders um, or across our clavicles so when you have somebody who sits a bar in the correct position most of the weight is being taken laterally so outside on the the deltoids more weight is being taken towards the outside of the shoulders than it is towards the inside when we start to raise up the shoulders a lot of time we'll get slight internal rotation in our shoulders depending on on how effective we are, how much range of motion we have. And what we really get is we get a concentration of that load more medially in towards the edge of those clavicles and it starts to push more back in towards our throat. This happens a lot more in lighter weight class athletes, youth athletes and female athletes. And you start to get this kind of lightheadedness or dizziness associated with the front squat. This only gets worse the heavier the weight is. So as we get towards heavier weights, we tend to push up more. We tend to want to bring the weight back more. And then obviously the higher our elbows come, the more that weight is focused in towards the windpipe, the more blood we start to restrict. Ideally, what we'd like here is we'd like those elbows to be still quite high. So we still have a good front rack position, but we want a full grip around the bar. So obviously full grip around the bar is, is really subjective, how much range of motion you have in your shoulders, how effectively you can hold onto the bar, if you can still get your elbows up. Uh, for some people, having a full grip of the bar will be so uncomfortable that they won't be able to get their elbows up and they'll end up hinging over or taking too much weight in their hands. So it really is a kind of an action point. If you can take a full grip of the bar while front squatting, you should probably fix that before going to like a fingertips grip or even like just relaxing it out so it's just two fingers around the bar in each hand. This leads us on to the next point, and this is the point of our general posture, where our shoulders lie in relation to our mid and upper back, and then where our mid and upper back lies in relation to our lumbar and our hips. So what you see here is you get hips tucked in underneath, so you get this kind of posterior pelvic tilt, hips are pushed all the way forward, we then get a slight flattening of that like natural lumbar curve, and then we get this position where hips are all the way underneath the shoulders to the point where we're probably slightly in advance of the shoulders with our hips. We start to lean back to be very, very upright because that feeling of being upright feels better. It's also a subconscious thing that as we get a looser grip on the bar and push the bar more in towards our neck, we will subconsciously push our neck back and we'll get a slight tilting of the head to elongate the airway. So all these things are happening because of one or two things being wrong and it really does push you off from the very, very start. In this case, with this front squat, what you see is it's initiated with the hips, which is something we'd never ever want for a front squat. In most squatting scenarios, we want an initiation of both hips and knees, so knees traveling forward, hips traveling backwards at the same time. In the case of a front squat, you want to bias it more towards the knees going forward, but it still doesn't mean that the knees go forward before the hips ever come back. What you get is you get a simultaneous moving of the hips going backwards, knees coming forward, but the knees will just travel a small bit further forward. We have a case later on where we have a really good front squatter, a really good practitioner at a front squat who has a short torso in relation to his legs, and this is Miso Hasano. 
in his case, his knees travel very, very far forward, and you'll see just how effective that is with his front squat. So once we get that initiation of the squat where their hips have gone too far back or their hips have gone back too early, they now start to shift their weight back towards the heels, which is a non-ideal position, particularly for those people who are really looking to develop quad musculature, not only just to get a better front squat, but maybe for athletic performance or to make their pull stronger. What you see is you get a small fluttering of the toes, so that's a, a telltale sign that too much weight has gone onto the heels or we've gotten a shift of that center of mass too far back. We then get this combined with a, a stance that is very wide. So as they start to shift their weight back, their knees will go out to the side and it becomes a very, very hip dominant movement. So overall now, what we've got is we've got an issue at the very start where they're placing the bar on their, their upper chest. This is then leading to an issue with how their posture sits and their shoulders in relation to their hips. This is then related into a, an initiation issue where the hips are going back too early and now we start to see a weight displacement issue. When you see people like this failing squats, you'll see them sitting all the way down, getting rooted down into the bottom of the squat position and they kind of just plop the bar out in front of them. This is obviously not ideal in terms of a, a safety aspect because a lot of time their ass will be sitting on their heels. They'll have very, very little uh, play. So that it's not like they're just going to be able to, to kind of bounce the bar away from them slightly. They certainly won't be able to sit back because they've already used all that range. Their, their hamstrings are probably on top of their calves. Their calves are probably at their, their maximal in terms of compression. And now the only option is this kind of forward bailing motion, which is even less safe due to the fact that we only have fingertips around the bar or possibly only two fingertips around the bar. This is where bad front squat fails happen. Finally then, as we start to see this squat coming up out of the bottom, if we start to get heavy weight on the bar, first thing you notice is those hips. So we don't have knees in front of the toes. We don't have knees anywhere near as far as they could be forward. In this case, there's flat shoes being worn, which isn't helping with that. When those knees are already far back, the only real movement we have to do, like we can't bring our knees back and start to engage our quads because they're already back as far as they need to be or far as they can be. The only thing we can really do here is just shift those hips. And the first thing that happens when we start to move the hips is the center of mass will move back again. So our hips have, have come down in that semicircular movement. They've settled somewhere above our heels. The only movement they have to go is backwards. So knees can't move forward all those hips are going to do is move backwards and then we get this forward hinging and we start to see that kind of caving of the upper back due to the fact that lever is so long and you have so much force coming through that kind of back as it's in a non-ideal position. So what should this look like? So the first one we're going to look at is Miso. So Miso has phenomenal range of motion in his hips and in his ankles. You'll see on his front squats his knees go very 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 far forward. In terms of weightlifter, Miso's back tends to be shorter than the average weightlifter in relation to his leg length. And what you see is him really utilizing those open hips. He sits all the way down into the bottom. His knees come all the way forward. And then on the way back up, when, his, his, when he has to develop tension, you can allow your knees to come back. So he's bringing his knees back from that fully forward position. As his knees come back, he's obviously driving with his legs. And then his, his hips will start to push up due to the fact he has that extra range. Next person we're going to look at, Tashiki. So Tashiki has a really, really nice front squat. In fact, a lot of the people, when they looked at the video last week, were saying, oh, Tashiki actually squats with his feet wide and his toes pointed out. The case of his front squat, his toes are pretty far forward or pretty straight forward. The main thing you want to look at here is, is the grip on the bar. So really strong grip on the bar, really strong upper and mid back. And this allows him to have a lot of control as he's standing his front squat back up. In the last case of kind of an ideal case scenario, we look at Toma. So Lordina Toma, Toma Lordina, really, really strong squatter. And you see somebody who has longer femurs or longer legs in relation to their back. Another case of a highly elite weightlifter with a really, really good front squat and a, an exceptionally good back squat. And what's she doing? Well, look at where the weight is on her feet. The weight is centered on the foot the entire time. You don't get this kind of shifting of the weight backwards as she sits back into the rep. She really loads her quads up as she sits down. And then you have a very, very powerful uh, upward phase of lift or concentric phase of lift. These are the things you should be paying attention to. So if you've watched last week's video, you're kind of looking for these real world examples. This is really what you want to look out for. Are you that person in the first video? 
are you keeping your knees back too much? Are you bringing your hips back too much? Particularly for the longer legged people, particularly longer femurs, it's easy for us to bring our hips way back, right? Because that lever length is so long, we can really bring the hips back. And especially when we sit into the bottom position, the closer we come, so as we pass parallel and bring those hips in, we get a better position. So from parallel, parallel is the worst position for the longer legged lifter. As we come into the bottom, we get a more vertical and upright torso, and that bottom position feels strong and it feels deep. The problem is to get back up out of the squat, we have to go back through that non-ideal position and get to the, the eventual upright squat. If this is you, I'd really be interested to see what you think in the comments. If you're somebody who's lacking a bit of direction with your squatting in general, we'd highly recommend running the Seek a Strength Road to Anywhere Squat Program. You can find that in the link down below. Also, a lot of people run the Seek a Strength Back Squat Program with their front squats instead, and they make unbelievable progress. As we talked about last week, a lot of people don't really attack the front squat with the necessary kind of volume and intensity they should, and this would be a great place for you to start. Thanks for watching.